Viva Viva Market update very quick with a lot, lots of information. Um, let's take a look at a few grid index. Uh, yesterday was 22, last week was 24, right now it's 26. We expect this number to grow too out of control. Um, it's not really much of incentive for in that number to grow up. All right, so let's take a look at blockchain center before we go and check uh, at a BTC chart. It's going to take a look at a BTC chart right in a second. As you know, I like to go back to the site. I think they have a very, very great way to put up the info from the blockchain from all the activities that BTC is doing. So as you know, we are pretty much on a basically a fire sale. Yeah, in the blue line, taking a look at uh, the rainbow here. As you highlight it, so you can see what it is. So as you know, right now, they're going all the way to 2025. You can kind of stretch to 26, or even as far as you want, 2028. Even 20, 2030. The reason why I went 2030, that's the most all the experts are saying Bitcoin by then will reach a million dollars in BTC. But as you know, I want you to actually take a look at this chart how Bitcoin came. How see the the chart is always growing, going up, but there's always all this dips all those crashes so just to bear in mind uh right now let's just take a look the seasons there's so much info here that it does a great job but yeah let's see what season we are right now so as you can see we we had a spike when ftx don't really want to talk about ftx there's so much information on YouTube about what happened. And for those that I had FTX token, as you know, you can go back to my videos when I started on YouTube. For those that took the course and stuff with the course with me and then part of the group, they know I, it's almost, you won't see any advertising about FTX. I, I didn't use them. I use it once. I didn't like it. So that's why I never promoted to you guys. I never did a video about FTX or anything. So somehow I didn't really find it, uh, you know, very attractive for me to use as an exchange or as a product as well. I didn't use the the um, the the fake uh stable coin, which is FTT. I I never invested on on the coin as well, the FTX coin. So somehow, when I did my research on that, I didn't really find it too, um, I wasn't too comfortable with them. So that's why you guys never heard me talking about that. Uh, all right, so so as you know, there was a huge spike uh, for for all coins by then. And then when that thing just came, it just started crumbling and, you know, so we're back at the uh, whole Bitcoin season and there's no 43. As you can see, all most of all coins are really suffering right now. Medic is doing pretty good. BNB for now is doing pretty good. I don't think it might hold from you know they if the bear market continues, I don't think they they will, will be able to sustain. XRP, you know, the case of XRP is very interesting because, you know, XRP is going through this whole uh, fighting with the uh, Security Exchange Commission. So it kind of, you know, they haven't, what I'm seeing for XRP is more hype than anything else because people are really, really hoping that they win. So they, uh, so they can go in and just, uh, uh, speculate. But the other thing about XRP, XRP has a proven system. 
has a proven system, guys. It works. It's been in the market for a long time. So whatever you know, I'm saying speculating because people just want they win and so they speculate and and they blow the blow the market on the exit people. You know, you know how uh, how they polluted the crypto market of pumps and dumps. But anyways. All right, so so this is a great uh, let's go to month and see what season we are. Of course, we're not an all point season. Everything's point the uh, Bitcoin is actually gaining pretty good liquidity here. It's interesting that uh, all points are gaining a little bit. Uh, if you scroll all the way right here is is that's it. All right, so any uh if you guys wanna take a look at other things here. They have so many things, daily trading coins, flipping index, Bitcoin supply. So you can really, really see what's going on. The dominance chart. I like to sometime doing my, when I do my research. I like to see the dominance for it, but I don't look it here. I, I go to the numbers. I go to trading view, but if you don't know how to use trading view, this is a great, uh, Great info here to for you to do. So you can see here BTC, even on coin get code, so you can find that as well. BTC 37, ETH 17, USD 7.7. 7. And you have a chart here showing. So market cap, we are 851. We're not really too bad, guys, because uh, if you guys remember for the the huge crash we had on 2020 because of pandemic. The the market cap was between five hundred billion. So we are eight hundred billion. So it's still not bad. It might even go. You know, it might drop more, but you know, it's still pretty good because uh, if I remember correct, on uh, pandemic we went from a couple trillions to five hundred, and we got to a point that we actually went to a hundred billion. So. When we get to a hundred billion, if we get to a hundred billion within this bear market, so you know that's one of my points for me to start buying heavily. But right now, um, uh, you know, just doing DCA, but really on the coins that I did a lot of research, I'm very comfortable with. So. And the other thing is, I promised uh, putting up a few videos about the coins I'm actually researching. I did it because some of my, the coins, the first coin that actually I did it, it was part of this whole scandal with FTX. So I'm actually redoing uh, so um, so I can put up, and, and I will explain which coin it is later on uh, on other videos and why I kind of hold back uh because I, I do really want to know exactly if they if they're gonna make it after this whole storm comes um, it goes out right all right so let's take a look uh I got a few articles here just to see just to show you guys why I've been telling you guys for a long time there's no incentive for the market whatever market, even um, S XMP, the stock market, or the NASDAQ, or crypto, to really um, get back to the all-time highs. And, um, you know, the we everything, if you go into YouTube, you know there's a lot of people claim we bottom, we almost close to the bottom for, for crypto. Uh, get ready, 2023. <laughs> I'm not seeing really positive 2023 unless the, there's a pivot for the feds. If the feds start um, printing a lot of money, so we might see a, a, a couple pumps. You know, that would be good to get in and get out. So but we'll, we'll, I'll keep you guys posted. So before we go into this article, uh, let's go back to a BTC chart. Uh, all right. We are in a daily time frame. Uh, I'm just going to squeeze here so you guys can see. Uh, take my, my little friend out of here. 
as you can see, I I removed the trend line that we had. Um, just want, want me to, to draw it again. <laughs> so he's just do it right here. And let's see. There you go. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful. Um, what we can see is that BTC price actually, you know, he played out as we wanted. He kind of uh, get outside of that trend line. He pump it a little bit, you know, he pump it a little bit, a little bit. We got that little bit of a bump right here. And then kind of came back and retest the trend line, which is good, guys. You guys know uh, prices that have always to come back and, and retest that support and build a support line so we can be more comfortable and see how far we are. But this one thing I'm, I'm actually – Seeing on a day time frame and on, on a four hours time frame and a lower time frame as well. So you can see it, you can clearly see it. We forming a bear flag. What, what's a bear flag for those that don't really know what's a bear flag? So we, we'll go to, go to Google. Okay, so. One that is is one that's actually uh right here. This one is, I think the that one's you can play very good. Okay, so we're looking here on where it says there is okay, let's open up. I think it will be better if we open up the what's that? Where's that image? Okay, right here. Okay, guys, so we're looking, we're forming exactly like this one, the third one. One, two, three. As you can see, this is what we call a bear, uh, a bear flag. That's what Bitcoin is actually forming. It's actually came out of the triangle a little bit. It came out, it's coming down right now. Uh, you know, so that's what Bitcoin, we're going back there. Um, I'm going to. Actually, uh, zoom in so you guys can actually see. Because uh, I. All right, guys. So, see, so you can take a look. You see exactly what BTC is doing. Um, and I'm going to show you that he's been doing that since we got into the bear market. Right over here, if you can see it, it's forming a bear market. So I'm saying bear market, bear flag. So normally when we get a bear flag, guys, you know, it's like that. Normally the price <clears throat> coming down. I, you know, I made it a a uh, resistant. I went ahead and made a resisting that we, we actually have to overcome, which is between uh, 17 to 18. And then the support that we have found, that is, is pretty okay. It's 15, between 15, 300. So uh, we tested twice this year, as you can see. We didn't, uh, you know, the thing I, I didn't like is that we didn't engulf in the red candle. It wasn't in the green one didn't engulf it, the red candle. It would be nicer if it would engulf that. The second try, uh, it didn't engulf. Hold on, let me just actually circle so you guys know what I'm talking about. So this green candle right over here, engulf it. No, a third test that we had, which was right over here. Green candle in the engulf in the red, and a third, same thing. If you notice, the candle was an engulf in the red one. So that normally isn't very positive. We might get a little bit, and then we're gonna come down, guys. We will come down. We do this, and if it gets rejected right here, so we'll. Probably just goes to the lowest that we know. 
it might go 12, 10,000, who knows? But, you know, in the daily time frame, we form in a, a, a better flag. We go to four hours time frame, we're doing the same thing. So, um, I'll just show you guys why is okay. That's why I'm saying up. My bad, guys. My bad. All right, so you can see this is actually you can see exactly in a four hour time frame right here. A bear flag, exactly a bear flag. And now you can see it. We consolidate in a four hour time frame, but we have a positive thing here that's forming. We uh on a four hour time on a daily time frame we are uh let's just go back so you can see it. On a four hour time frame we are on a point that we have to retest the the triangle right here. You know, we kind of came a little bit retested. So we forming a um I'm seeing a a you know let's see if we get a a green engulfing candle there. If we actually get it right now. We'll see if that happens. We might get a pump, you know, seventeen thousand, maybe sixteen. I mean, we are sixteen right now, so we might get seventeen. Uh, don't know if we're gonna come back and, and retest this uh, this resistance right here. So, but right now we get an engulfing candle, uh, which means this the bulls are coming in. A uh a bit confident that we might get a pump, little uh, sm small pump or whatever, but you know on a on a four time frame, guys, what we seen we I'm just going to tell you guys we seen a consolidation, but at the same time we we have in the inverse here, right here, we're forming a bull flag, guys, a bull flag. This I think it might be playing out right now. So, uh, so if that plays exactly what I'm saying, what you should see is that we should see something like this. What we see is this. BTC is forming a, a bull flag. You should see that small one right here. So what you want to see will be what be tested and then probably get rumble right over here consolidate a little bit and then come and retest it right here and do or probably just coming crashing back down but on the, on the lower time frame this is a structure that is forming right now we got a bull flag, guys. Bull flag. So we might get a a, a small pump to the upside. That's what I'm seeing in a lower time frame. So for those traded, this is a structure that you can kind of follow up. Um, open up a little bit of the candles here in the price action. See, we are exactly what we are. We. We're doing a beautiful consolidating right now. We have retested one, one, two, three, and right, one, two. Yeah, yeah, guys. We might see a pump this week or next week. So but everything indicates that this week we might see a pump. All right? So. The low time frame but looking pretty good with we have a, a bull flag, but that doesn't mean it will play it out. Who knows if there's a bet? But the one thing you guys gotta be very uh aware is that when FTX uh news came, you know, BTC dropped all the way from uh twenty one to fifteen, right? Let's just take a look what happened when uh when uh I think I should, I should I will I will get my rule so you guys can see the difference that people actually are not selling we don't have uh, enough sellers in the market so this is the crash for 
on FTX, which is 27%. People sold their BTC. People got scared and sold. Now let's take a look at Celsius. Celsius and then take a look at, uh, here it is. Right here, guys. 44.3% of people sold when Celsius crashed. Okay, let's take a look at um, now Celsius. Uh, I believe this is May. What was it May? Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I think I believe this is when when uh, Luna crashed. I have to check my my dates, but I believe this is it. See that this one was Celsius, but I believe this is it. Because Luna was the first one that crashed the market. Really pretty steep. And you can see, look at that, 32.98. So, as you can see, the numbers are going down starting from the when the, you know, this whole mess started. As you can see, the, the bears are getting smaller. Not enough people here to sell. People don't want to sell. But we... Being left in the market is hopeless. People that are holding, people that are holding Bitcoin and the other good project. But at the same time, guys, look at that. If that, if we have a, another, another bad news, not seeing a, a less than 10, 5% drop. So, which means for me, myself, I tell you guys still based on that, is that, you know, when there's less people selling, the only thing left is, is people don't want to buy. So which means we might get closer to the bottom. Uh, so you keep hearing on YouTube. So don't let that fool you, meaning that the bear market will end. Doesn't mean it will end. It's just that there won't be enough people selling BTC. You know, so which means the price of BTC may stay uh, not stable. But the volatility will be very low, so we we'll, we might just be the best opportunity for a a swing trade, because we might this week we might be at sixteen thousand, next week we might be at twenty thousand, and then next week we might be at sixteen thousand. See, up and down, up and down. Just stay there, consolidating. So, all right, guys. So, as you can see, I even showed you what BTC. BTC is doing the same thing. This bear flag. This daily bay flag, as you can see, we did almost the same thing uh, right here. You know, we did uh, a bay flag. I showed you guys way before, and then we dropped, go back again. Same thing, consolidating, we did a bay flag. This is a horrible drone, but it's just to show you guys. Drop, drop, if you go back right, uh, just push it away so you guys can see exactly how this whole bad mark is playing out. Look at that, guys. Um, starting from here, same thing, guys. Drop, consolidating, drop. And then here we, we got that. We have a pump. We have that beautiful pump there. Pump. And then what happened? Drop and started the the whole cycle again. So, so historically, in terms of twenty one, twenty two, uh, twenty two, when we get into a bear flag, the price always comes down, guys. So see, doesn't mean we'll play out the same thing, but you just guys be aware. We might go sell the day for a bit right here. In between, but eventually we might just come in and retest this trend line. No, stay here and play for a bit. All right, so this is my update for the price of BTC in a short and a lower time frame. As you can see, we'll we definitely looking real good to a to a small a small pump, I would say, because uh, it's forming a bull. It actually formed a. Uh, a bull flag, which is it, it might it might play it might play it out this week. 
for next week. But for those traders, it's a fair opportunity to get some cash in. I mean, <laughs> cash out, right? Cash in because if you're trading, you got to put up some cash. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the article. I want to show you guys why I'm still very bearish because there's not enough incentive around the world. I know I focus a lot on the U.S. because of the uh, U.S. dollar is a global currency. So you can kind of track and see what, where, who's holding, who's not, and who's selling the, the dollars and whatsoever. All right, so uh, the article, the, uh, the article is from, um, it's based on the European market. Uh, it says the big default dozen countries in the danger zone. So let's take a look who's in the danger zone. Um, they talk about here Argentina, but we're just going to take a look at uh, uh, the charts. Whoever wants to read, can read it. Uh, Argentina, Ecuador, Egypt, El Salvador, Ethiopia, Gabon, uh, Ghana, Kenya, Mozambique, Nigeria, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. Uh, which is that? Uh, sir, surname, Suriname. Ah, sorry, I just screwed that up. I think that that's what it is, Suriname. Suriname. Um, damn it. <laughs> Pakistan, Tunisia, um, uh, Ukraine, and Zambia. All right. So those are the countries that. Uh, source is JP Morgan. Don't really trust those guys, but those are the the country they say the spread in the pain. The record numbers of developing world countries have been bond spreading to a thousand basis point this year. It's interesting that Angola is not there. But anyways, uh, uh here it is. Uh, you're showing of course the Ukraine bond brace for default is. Is if you can see this, this is a total collapse. This is the whole thing. It's completely collapsed, guys. Um, just can take a look at sub saharan Africa government bonds under pressure. Uh, uh there it is, and gold and green, guys. It's, uh, you know, credit B rate. They all consider it has credit B rates. Uh, interesting that South Africa is here. We got Rwanda as well. So we take a look at green. So uh green goes to twelve point seven US. Twelve point seven, which is means um you know they the bonds, the what we call the the teachers of Jesus, yes. Uh the people actually not buying because I, I don't know who's who would have buy bonds from Angola. It's just I don't see so those numbers don't don't really make sense for me. Um uh, not that I don't understand, it just don't make sense in certain countries here. And then just to see who's reporting this. Uh, it's based on JP Morgan. Yeah. Uh you know. You really gotta go and take a look at their numbers, the books and, and other sources to see if they actually uh it makes sense for you. All right, so and here it is. They say how not to spend it. Right, right, yes, right. Um proportional revenue countries spend services interest is paying on that. So basically, who's paying on the debt and who's not paying? The percentage. Sri Lanka is not paying because it's completely collapsed. They're saying Ghana is paying 53, Egypt, Zambia, Pakistan, Kenya, Nigeria, India, Laos, uh, Dominican Republic, Bangladesh, Bahia, Uganda, El Salvador, Brazil. Interesting, Brazil is in this, uh, which is one of the biggest producers in food. Especially here, Brazil is actually holding a lot of commodities. Uh, it's one of the countries that's holding the commodities market in. 
um, they still producing a lot, lots of food, and they in, ex they export the the a very high quality of food around the world, especially in the U.S. and other countries as well. Costa Rica, Jamaica, Namibia, South Africa. Look, your country Angola is actually paying uh seventeen percent. All right, cool. So there's uh, lots of charts here to, to kind of take a look and understand what really what's going on in the countries. Um, most of those countries you can see they are countries that produce a lot. You know, they might be a third world country, that, but they produce a lot of stuff. For instance, Angola produce oil. Um, Brazil food, um, mineral oil. Angola mineral doesn't really count because they don't put on the book, so. You don't really know what else we <laughs> exploring that, but it's not waste time on that. So let's take a look at uh, uh, United Nations. Uh, all this info from this uh, United Nations, I'm very questionable that the numbers as well. So it's just for you, uh, you guys to know what's going on how they report it as well. So what they say in the world economy situation and prospects, September 2020, brief number 164. There's always have a report they put out. So for those that want to follow up the report, you just sign up on the website. You will get a notification as well. The world's largest economies are facing sharp growth slow down, of course. Of course, manufacturing purchases uh, manager index. Look at this. We're talking about uh, United States, Europe, in China, <clears throat> everyone is is collapsed. And look, China actually pick up on April twenty twenty two, but everyone else is not picking up. United States had a little bump as well, um, while China was in decline in April. But look at the Europeans being just going to the dirt, guys. Look at that. It's since 2021, Europe is just going to the dirt. It will continue going to the dirt. There's not really much they can contribute, guys. Um, China is actually going back to the dirt since they, they went back to, um, you know, they went back to, to the curfew. They closed down the, the cities. They're going back to the whole lockdown for the pandemic. So one thing that I'm very interested in here that actually I like those numbers because I've been following the commodity prices as well. So if you hear commodity price, look at this food. Food, which is, uh, I believe the color is, is this dark blue. Yeah, prices of food is very high. Even here uh, in other countries, the price of foods are very high. Here uh, in America, prices are extremely it's Get it very high for food prices very high guys prices very high, um, the grains as you know one of the biggest contribute for grain was Ukraine, so now they not contribute as much. Look at the prices of grain which is uh old uh corns and, and etc. As fish just went off the hook guys, look at that metals and minerals. Same thing, so right now it's actually. It dropped. This data goes to January 18, 2018, to January uh, 22. Let's see the numbers will, what will happen. As you know, energy prices are skyhawk. It's the only thing that's not coming down. It has we speak right now, uh, November, the price is still very high. It will keep going higher, especially in the European area and America as well, because there's a shortage of everything. In terms of fuel, uh, right now we have a shortage of uh, diesel as well. So uh, and there's so much information here, guys. Central banks are changing course to inflation props, aggressive monetary tightening. The inflations are so high everywhere that unless you fight inflation and prices just keep going out of control, you got to contain inflation, but doing this, you got to sacrifice uh, the market as well. So, which means they got to collapse a few markets. Or they'll collapse the whole economy and start over. Or they got to sacrifice a few countries or a few um, sectors so they can at least lower the inflation and 
incentivize the, the market just to keep going, to slow down and uh, change the direction. Okay, so let's take a look at a different article here that says, this is for the National Rescue uh, Committee. The top 10 crisis the world can't ignore in 2022. Look the countries that they, they think needs to. Sudan, um, they're claiming uh, political tension into regional trials and conflict. The political tension, and look at that, is there the cause of droughts in conflict? Droughts, which is, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, droughts in Portuguese, second, yeah. All right, so next, Syria. Yeah, economic crisis compounds a decade of war. Yeah, interesting. Why you why you guys Somalia, humanitarian access worth and has needs for rice. Mm -hmm. uh, Myanmar, violent deadlock leaves millions in needs. It's a small country in South uh, Southeast Asia, I believe. Their Re Democratic Republic of Congo. We all know why uh, Congo is always in, in a fighting state. They won't let it uh, <laughs> They won't let Congo actually be a country unless, uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's just stay from that. South Sudan, regional tension, since they separate, they just keep having some lines, a lot of issues as well. Nigeria, Nigeria, look, their concern is the growing security across the country. As you know, Nigeria, uh, I don't know if he's half of Nigeria, but there's a, a good percent of Nigeria that's Muslim and the other one is Christian. So, yeah. And Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a, it's a case study, guys. You gotta, Ethiopia, there's so much info, bad info, false info about Ethiopia. That you guys really need to go in and understand Afghanistan, we all know the cause of that. Uh, okay, country with the lowest GDP growth in 2022. This is a global finance. Uh, just take a look, guys. Ukraine, of course. Uh, take just the looks here in uh, 2022. Uh, Russia, Belarus, which is Belarus, as you know, is Lebanon. Uh, Solomon Islands, Togo. Micronesia, Samoa, Estonia, Sudan, Paraguay, Moldova, Haiti, Hong Kong, Brazil. Uh, Kavarska Republic, Nauru, Yem, La Rivia, Kiribati, Morocco, San Marino, Venezuela, Chile, Armenia, Turkmenistan. What? All right. Finland, my right son, Tomein Prince, Luxembourg, Suriname, Athena, South Africa, Timor, Polia, Mexico, Marshallia, Albania, Mali, Antonia, Belgium, Germany, Cypher. So it's everything. They could just put it Europeans, uh, African. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah. Look, Asia as well. As you can see, I'm just summarized the whole oh, most of the countries I see here, which is um Europe, um Asia, you know, South America. Look Angola, Africa. Look, let's just summon the United Kingdom. I think it should be up there. Why is it? So, what we see is the most all the countries most we didn't see United States maybe they way down here. Most all the countries they're not growing their economy then they won't be growing. Uh, yeah, we didn't see China neither uh United States or Canada, which uh, you know. He's saying here is the gross domestic product of a country can be defined as the total monetary value of the goods and services produced within its border in a year. 
GDP, which is the growth domestic product, growth is expressed as a percent. The average growth rate has been calculated using the general metric mean to obtain five equivalent rate. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of ink for that. Let's take a, a look at another uh, article here. UN warns a colossal, a colossal guy, collapse of Afghanistan bank system. It's just, it's not really just in Afghanistan. It's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, guys. Listen to me. It's everywhere. Africa growing crypto market needs a better regulation, guys. For those guys that don't know, Africa crypto market is growing fast. Way faster than people know. A lot of people don't have the, that info, but Africa is being one of the forefronts of crypto. The collapse of the world's third largest crypto exchange, FTX. So, again, uh, the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other crypto assets prompt to renew calls for a greater uh, cons uh, consumer protection and regulation of the crypto market. Yeah, we, we need a. Uh, we need some regulations just to clarify well, how to do business within the crypto market. One thing I want to say, aside so I didn't make any more videos about FTX, is that crypto market didn't collapse, guys. It didn't, it, it's not like the crypto fell. No, 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 no. Don't let this whole bad news uh, go into your head. The crypto didn't fail, guys. The technology works. It's still working right now. It works. What didn't work is bad actors. It's like, you know, it's the centralized uh, platforms that came in and in the crypto market. They all collapsed, guys. Every decentralized protocol that you know in a market, go in right now, you can see, still works. It hasn't collapsed. The liquidity has declined, yeah? But... The technology works, guys. <laughs> Nothing has collapsed. The only thing that has collapsed is the centralized uh, platforms. It's the centralized. They say in D5 collapsed. No, the centralized finance did not collapse. What collapsed is this, uh, the centralized uh, D, uh, uh, E5. So don't get that twisted. The centralized protocols on a on a crypto market, on a blockchain, they have not collapsed, which means that the technology works, is safe. It's what we need to uh to evolve. It's just the centralized, centralized. Everything that is centralized will always collapse. Okay? There's always a guy there behind it, and uh, you know, his pockets get full really quick, and he gets very. Uh, yeah. All right, so there's a very interesting article here that you guys need. You really need to take a look, read, close it on, on this article. There's so much great info that uh, my man Richard here, Rick Mills, actually put up. He's saying, I like this title, Walking Dead, U.S. Dollar. Okay. I want to actually go down to what I want you guys to see here. This is very interesting, guys. Very, very for you guys to actually take a look. It goes back, it goes to all the way to January 2022. Mm -hmm. US government debt held by China and Japan. In other words, remember I showed you guys bonds, um, countries holding bonds and stuff. Okay. So um as you know, a lot of countries that buy bonds or they they buy they held debt. From countries that are like US and European, because you know the countries they, they will pay, you know, they have a strong economy. So if you hold their treasury or their bond, you know they'll they'll pay out, right? So that means that China and Japan, they're the ones who hold most of the most of the US debt. So US has to pay uh China and Japan a percentage, right? So What's what's happening right now is that you can see here China and Japan, which is the largest uh, holders of debt, the U.S. debt, in trillions of dollars. They actually dumping. They've been dumping. Say, so if you 
take a look here. China has been doing that since 2018. Japan actually, uh, it was dumping, but um, 2019 actually added a, uh, added a lot. And they kind of stayed it for a, for a bit since 2021. In January, what happens is that yen has been collapsing for so long that to sustain the 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 rate for yen for the currency, it had to dump. And they're dumping. They keep dumping. But you can see China has a long-term plan. They've been dumping for since 2018, guys. And 2022... As the dollar uh gets weaker, they just accelerated. They just push the brakes. It's crazy. The other thing I want you guys to see is that's that's very interesting. It's just, uh, I can't understand why this guy don't really uh the news they 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 won't report this. Look at this. This is actually from IMF, your favorite guys, FME. Look at this, yum stockpile, yum stockpile, guys. Who's stockpiling the Chinese uh, 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 currency? Russia has nearly third of all reserves in China's remedy. Can you see that? Look, the countries that are actually holding the uh, uh, Chinese uh, um, currency, Russia, uh, Brazil, Suisse. Look at this. <laughs> Mexico, Israel, Chile, South Africa. The list goes on. There's uh, a lot more here. They have in, uh, you know, those in different colors here. And this is IMF reporting this, guys. This is, you know, uh, whether you like them or not. But this, what they, look at this. The number is is, is, is growing. It's in, and you know, they say it's sold in Chinese. It's in billion uh, in terms of dollars, right? Uh, now you can see here currency composition. Uh, Non-traditional currencies have played a large role in the global foreign exchange reserves in recent years. Look at this. The currency composition of global foreign exchange reserve percentage. So 70% for US dollars is, right now is a started 70% or if it was probably even higher. And that's 59 you know, in terms of the whole global reserve currency, most of the central banks, what they hold in dollars, 59%. I remember back in the days, it's probably even, it was probably 90 or 80%. Look at this, it's 59% now. And this data only goes to 2021, which means this number is probably even lower than we expect when the new numbers come in. For Europe, it's only 21%. Others, 10%. Yem, 60%. Uh, uh, Great Britain is 5%. So Yem is actually gained. Um, so now, government versus central banks, guys. Uh, There's a quote here. Egon, uh, he says, we must be prepared for the most massive money printing. Look, this is what we all wanted. He reported September 6, 2022. <laughs> this is what we all want for Feds to do the pivot. A mass, most massive, um, which will be, after that, will be a total collapse. But what we want is that we want to get that opportunity to come in back in the market and, and get, a, get some profit and then reinvest in some good commodities, guys. Monazo in history, final attempt to save the world. This is what's going to, they, they will try to do that. Every central bank will just go mad in terms of printing money. All sectors of the economy, individuals, company, banks, local government, etc. sector, will be in the need of financial support of magnitude never before seen in history. In simple words, he's saying most every country every part of the sector of the economy, there'll be a total collapse. The, the only thing to save them will be a massive printing so they can hold those sectors alive. So, you know, for us traders, for us investors, quick, short investor, long investor, this is the greatest opportunity to make quick money. But at the same time, when you print a lot of money without that reflecting the GP, uh, GDP of the country, 
you know, there's massive uh, negative effects later on. So Fed's right here, the rates, you can see U.S. debt to GDP rate. It doesn't go on currently because they have more debt than actually what they produce. Look, it's been since 2020. Look, in 2021, we know it was insane money that they injected. The U.S. Uh, national debt is just tripled. So much info here, guys. Um, that's it, guys. It's uh, it's another one. Uh, why is Turk Lira crashing? There's a video I put up uh, about that. Uh, it's still collapsing, guys. Uh, so there's a video, uh, an old video that I put up about that. And there's another uh, website, guys. I want you guys to actually um, bookmark is blockchain.com. They have updated a few things. One thing I like about that is that you can actually follow the charts here. He, um, what they what they do is they pull all the info from the blockchain. If you don't want to just go to go and get going going to the blockchain and and kind of sort out all those numbers for you, this is a great uh website for you to actually uh, see what's going on, not just uh the price. But the average block size, formation of transaction per day, you can actually see, and then it kind of see is it growing, is he is it dropping, what's going on? So here you can see, in terms of dollar, it's actually uh uh a drop, he dropped. We're in a bad market, dropped, but the transaction actually increased, guys. It's interesting. In terms of uh, exchanging, uh, probably when people are selling, uh, numbers actually, not a lot of people are selling anymore, but in terms of transaction, it's actually increased. So people buying or they selling. So there's so much info here that you can see. And then you can always see there's the mining information here, the block details, uh, currency, and you can see or exchange, trading volume, market calculation, market price, total circulating, Bitcoin, there's so much info. That's why I like uh, just going back uh, for the blog, blockchain.com. So just all this info here, guys. If you want to know the market calculation, what's going on, um, here it is. You can see, you know, <clears throat> This is a total U.S. value of Bitcoin in circulated, right? So we have uh, 21, and uh, you can see in blue it's the U.S. and then we have in BTC. So it's, you know, you can download it as well. You can view for documentation. So I like the what they're doing. They're doing a pretty good job. And sort of all this info. It's a lot of info, guys. But the certain things that you want to come in and check it out, especially that transaction thing, is very, very. Uh, uh, no one can really lie to you because if you can see if the transaction, um, is it growing? Is it dropping? What's going on? Is it stable? Stable in a mean that is a, you know, is it consolidating? You know, so for you to actually, you can kind of. Check, take a look at blockchain. You saw those numbers of transaction. You're like, okay, I uh, still have doubts. Go to Coin Gecko, Coin Market Cap, go to BTC, go inside of the blockchain, guys. Go there. Here it is. You can uh, explore. They have the blockchain, uh, blockchain, token view, or BTC. Whatever you want to go is the info is that. Let's take a look at BTC. Kind of took us out to so you can kind of for for blockchains. See, you can kind of see the same thing here if you want to, but that's not what I want. What we want, we want to go in the blockchain. Here it is. So you can you can now you can see you can see the transaction right here, right? Transaction right there. I here it is, guys. So all the transactions you can sort it out uh, uh in input count output count so the in and the out um but as you know it's a lot of info so uh 
that the blockchain uh dot com actually sort of this out and gives you those percentages that you can see. But you can see the wallets, you can confirm there's a real wallet, there's the blocks, everything. So you can see there's so far there's 783 million, but you gotta know when when uh you know because there's dates, right? This uh this just happened. This just happened. So you can go through it if you want it, but it's a lot of info that you can reset sort of and kind of see it. You can actually use it here as well. Uh but then you know, you can sort of BTC US. Uh, timing as well, but you know, there's so much info, so you can see it. So, all the info is there, so you can kind of just see if, uh, um, besides the block blockchain, you can go to token view. I think token view will be way better, uh, in terms of uh, to see the transaction. Here it is. So, a hundred so far. The cool thing about talking view is that it's a daily tracking thing. So you can see that so far and within the blockchain of, of, of BTC, uh, there's only 143,000 uh, transaction. And you can come in back to uh, back to blockchain.com and you can kind of compare where is all the transaction from right here. Uh, day. You know, so they say there's a hold on, it's actually simplified. They say the total of transaction per day confirmed right as of this moment is 211 765. All right, so you go back to token view, you see, you see 142.43. So now you got to see. Where are they taking their info? Uh, blockchain are they taking from Coin Gecko, Coin Market Cap, um, exchanges? You know what I'm saying, guys. Uh, there might be a delay, but I don't think there's a delay in terms of uh, the token view. There might be as well. There might be some data they haven't get yet, but I don't think so because this this is inside the POW. It's proven, uh, proof of work, right? The the whole blockchain of uh, for for BTC. So that's what you say. It's some you know some of some of the things might want to know how they get in their info, but right here the inside the blockchain, it says it's only one hundred forty two daily, um, uh, transaction that is happening, right? The transaction volumes are different things. Supply, size, difficulties, actually. No. All right, guys. I know it's a lot of info, but I just wanted to show you guys that there's not much of an incentive for us to be bullish in the market right now. Um, what you want to do is do your DCA, but at the same time, um, do your research. Just uh, be aware that things are not the way it is. Uh, the you know central banks are are willing to fight the inflation to get lower, so by fighting the inflation, you gotta collapse a few things, and that's what's happening, guys. All right, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you got any questions, you want me to uh cover anything, just let me know. The other thing is the this Friday, that's when I'm gonna release the coin that actually uh I changed. To the other coin that I was actually doing, I was doing Solana, uh, but Solana, <laughs> Solana got screwed with the uh, whole FTX because FTX, the guy, he, they hold almost sixty to seventy percent of Solana, so there's a fear they have to dump. I know they dumped, they did dump because uh, Solana went to nine dollars. I was predicting three dollars. I think it might even go there because I don't think they have liquidated all the Solana they have. Uh, they still on a bankruptcy thing. So we might see another dump for Solana, guys. So be aware. Doesn't mean the Solana protocol is a bad one. It just means that they got funded and they put the, the bad actors, you know, 
the whole team with Solana, they great team. They 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 doing great stuff. Solana is doing some great stuff, but these this whole film of FDX is just came it's like a punch in the face that you guys you haven't been you know, you're standing somewhere, there's a guy that doesn't like you and he comes up to you, you talk to a couple guys, a couple girls, and you having a good time and you just find yourself on the floor bleeding from your mouth or from your nose because some guy that didn't like just punch you. So that's how I see Solana and FDX. So and it wasn't a really good Elijah, but that's pretty much where it is. Okay, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. All right? All right, let's go, guys.